I want to follow up on what Brian said and, and talk about the fire departments. And I want to start out by saying that I appreciate the volunteers. I mean, obviously, I've talked a lot about the library, and I appreciate the volunteers there, okay? But I appreciate the volunteer fire departments, and I, I really want to say that. If I, you know, if my, I feel like I could count on them if my or my family needed them, I appreciate what you do, and I want to make sure that that's clear. Um, up here, you know, we're, we're part of the county, and we all represent the county. Um, some of us are districts fall in the municipalities, too. And a big part of mine is the city of Clinton. And so I have to, I live in the city of Clinton, and I made a choice to live there. Um, and because of that, you know, I'm closer to some services. I may pay a little more taxes, but I'm okay with that. And I have received a lot of calls this week regarding the sales tax. And one of the major concerns from the people living in the city of Clinton is the distribution of the sales tax to the volunteer fire departments. So as it's set out currently, it's an equal distribution. So every fire department and rescue is going to get the same amount. Okay. Um, Act 833, which I knew nothing about, uh, but have researched it probably more than I want to, honestly, sets out guidelines for how um, currently uh, Act 833, which is money from the state, and Brian interject if I say anything wrong, um, is distributed. And so, for instance, like in 2006, an ordinance was passed by the Quorum Court that laid out those percentages, and I want to just give you an idea of where it is. Clinton gets 15%, 15.04%. Fairfield Bay gets 12.46 and everyone else gets 4.5 okay and that's based my understanding is on property values so for instance a lot of the people that have called me have said if Walmart catches on fire if the nursing home catches on fire we have to evacuate all those people and that's a it's a big deal so when you're in a municipality when you're in Fairfield Bay and the hotel catches on fire that's a four-story building and it's been deemed that they get a higher percentage because of different factors that go in that. And so, to represent my people, what I would propose to amend this with, and I'm not proposing a, I'm going to, I'll just say, but we can, I would like to propose to amend it so that the distribution follows Act 833. Now, I'm not an attorney, so, I don't know how legally to, to word that, and I'm going to need advice on that. And I'm, uh, but I want to at least discuss it because I feel like it's it's a really big deal, and we're talking about doing it 16 years. That's 16 million dollars. That's 32 million dollars over, but that's 16 million half of this going to volunteer fire departments, and I value them. I do, but I feel like. <coughs> $16 million is a lot of money. I have to represent that I live in the city. I feel like I make a choice to live in the city. Um, to, I, I, I just feel that way. Um, and so I, that's what I would like to propose that be explored. Uh, I too live in a city. I represent Fairfield Bay. Um, we have eight buildings that need a ladder truck. We have a 34 year old ladder truck. And to replace it, it's going to take us $800,000. Um, I don't think there's going to be many other places in the county that's going to need a ladder truck. Um, it takes, it just takes different equipment for different places. Also, in, in doing so, this has been a very interesting exercise because some of the things that we found out I talked to Doug, Doug Forsman today, and um, it, it's been knocked around that between Fairfield Bay and Burnt Ridge, they've gotten some new things through grants. And I was wondering why why haven't other places tried to get grants also? Can everybody hear me? Yes. I've got a loud voice. I can make it louder. Okay. Uh, and and I asked Doug, and and he said that they have uh, they have applied for. Assistance to Firefighter Grant, 
and it's given one time a year, and it's a FEMA grant. And, um, and the way they've done it is they have simply hired grant writers, okay? And it's $700 once a year. Okay, somewhere in this, now I, I don't know how we could do this, I'm just going to throw this out. For $12,600, everyone could go to, each one of our facilities could go to a grant writer. And, and let me tell you what, what it could get. Uh, Burnt Ridge, over five years, has gotten a brand new pumper truck, a tanker, and a brush truck. I have no idea what a brush truck is, but it sounds good. Uh, Fairfield Bay has gotten 23 air packs, and each one of those air packs is worth six thousand dollars. Okay, that's I think it works out to one hundred and thirty-eight thousand uh, dollars, and 29 full sets of protect protected gears. Uh, I didn't say that right. Protected gear. Now that's helmet to boots. And uh, each one of those is worth $2,200. Okay, that's $63,000. Um, why, why are the other ones not doing this? I would really want to encourage this. If we have money set aside for you, sir, to, to go to a grant writer, could we this help you? A grant Pardon? We did go to a grant writer. And did you we get something? Like Exactly. We, 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 we as well. The last three years yeah, not, not, not all the time do you go get and put that grain in. The okay, excuse me. Okay. One one at a time, and, and that's my fault for not calling. I, I, I call uh, Mr. Brown. We did go. Choctaw went to him for the last three years. Same grant writers Same that grant you writers. used and that they used, and we didn't get selected. Did you find out? Now this is the this is the uh, old-fashioned teacher in me. Okay. Did you did you dot all your eyes and cross all your yes, T's? All well, I can say is no, I wrote a grant uh -huh. for Choctaw, and we did get selected, and we got all new turnouts, and we got SCBAs. Mm -hmm. But since then, we have not been able to get one because I think more to it the fact that they. <coughs> so when y'all get a grant, and that's time for somebody else and somebody else. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's federal monies, mm -hmm. and they're going to try to spread it around as much as they can to say that it's gone out to different groups. Can we so try again? We probably will when it comes out. Okay. But it's, you know, it's the type of thing that it's yeah. not a guarantee mm -hmm. where... This money coming in is something of a guarantee to us. But you have received something from it? Uh, about 12 okay. years ago. Okay. Yeah. About 14 years. It started off by saying, we have not received anything for the last 12 years. Maybe that would help. I don't know. Well. Would you be willing to try again? Oh, I would. Okay. I would. Good. I would. All right. Mr. Anderson. Mm -hmm. Jerry, I, I, I will I say this to Clinton and Fairview Bay. Grants are out there. Go get them. That's yeah. what I say. You know, I look at you saying Clinton people are important. Rural people out in All Red are important too. And mm -hmm. and I get to this, Fairview Bay. We do automatic aid with you. I come out and visit you a lot. Mm -hmm. I bring a tanker out to you. Okay? This automatic aid goes in the same way you Clinton, let's say the Walmart catches on fire. Where am I out of truck time? Be welcome to come up here with a fire truck to put you out. How many districts are around Clinton right now? How many fire trucks are around Clinton? Besides Clinton, that would come to this fire. You know, so we look at that and say Clinton is important, but so is these rural areas. So is Damascus, so is Allred, so is Chimes, uh, uh, Graysville. These people are way out here. Allred fire trucks, we go out and work on them all the time. I'm tired of putting duct tape on trucks. Okay, I am tired of it. I, I understand, and I just want. And here's the deal, and I want to clarify this. I'm not proposing giving <coughs> no money to. I'm not one. I want to clarify that I do not think Clinton people are more important. It's, it's just, it's what I represent. It's the area I represent. I have got a ton of calls saying that, and I don't represent Clinton, so I'm not saying Clinton's not going to support it or anything like that. My voters that have called me said that they would 
not support it and they would campaign against it. So I have to address it, okay? okay. The other thing that I'm saying is I'm not saying don't give what I, what this proposal would do is let's do do chimes since you brought that one up. They'd get sixty thousand dollars a year. They'd get I believe that's seven hundred and twenty five thousand dollars over this whole top tax. So a quarter three quarters of a million dollars is what I am voting for I would propose that chime gets. But I can't deny and, and and I think that there are creative ways to think how the county ones that are not the municipalities could maybe even use their cumulative eleven point six million dollars to borrow against it. Eleven point six million dollars just to the county ones, not the two municipalities, is a lot of money. And so that's just you know, and, and when the voters say that they're gonna not, not vote for it and vote against it, like I said in the beginning. The end product of what gets voted on and if it passes or not is the most important thing to me and so I need to flush this out. Can I just say, I feel like Nikki is just being a voice for her people. That's what we're, I mean, it's not about what we want personally. It's about, you know, the people that have called, they've reached out. However, um, I have to disagree with that because even though there may be more people in Clinton, they don't give trucks to chimes for different rates that they do to people in Clinton. So it's going to cost the same amount of money for the fire departments regardless of the population. And, and, and just to back that up, the whole idea behind this is to help the smaller fire departments get up where they need to be. They have been way back for so long that it's going to take that money. For me to sit here and agree to give Clinton almost four times what everybody else gets is absurd for me. Yes. I mean, I just can't do that. Thank you. With the, you know, the Act 833 money, the way that's split up, and that's done through the Intergovernmental Council, you know, Clinton receives the bigger portion of that, 15.4%, okay, which is $26,752.57. Fairfield Bay receives 12.46% of that, and I don't have that figure, a little bit less where all the other fire departments receives 4.5%. That's $8,000 a year. Okay? That's how that's, that's scheduled. Okay? And, and that's fine. Okay? But to sit here and move our sales tax that would be voted on to give Clinton almost four times more than all these other fire departments is absurd to me. Thank you. I mean, because we have got to build these other fire departments up. That's what the whole idea behind this is. Yes. I'm not saying that Clinton's any less valuable, but the damn sure ain't any more valuable than my people. I can tell you that. Because I, I know who I represent. Okay? That's what I'm saying. And I understand Nikki. We, we've drunk it. We've been going at it all day. But I understand that. But I can't sit here in good conscience, you know. And if the city of Clinton don't want to spot or don't want to vote for them, don't vote for it, okay? But I can promise you, those those other fire department guys out there that are fighting tooth and nail to try to get it built, you know, get their fire department built back up the way they need it. That's really where I have an issue, and and, and I hate to put it so elementary, but. It feels like people are saying, well, if you do that, I'm not going to be your friend anymore. That's, I mean, and you're cutting your nose off to spite your face because maybe if you don't get the amount that you want, you're not going to get anything if you don't vote for it. Yeah. Well, I represent the other side of Clinton, which the school district is in. I've had one phone call. One. So I can't agree with Nick. Well, my phone calls have been different, and I just have to say that this scenario, because this is an important thing to, and Brian, I mean, okay. <laughs> Doing it by Act 33, 833, versus splitting it all the same, splitting it equally 18 ways, or 17 ways, they get more. They get 50, they get 43. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to clarify that that was based on 12 years because I really thought it would be 12 years. <coughs> Over the period, Culpeper Fire Department, even in this way, because I'm going to go to Sarah's comment, would get 43,000 more than they would get if it was split equally among them all. So, my point being is, is that I agree with that, Sarah, to look at what 
Clinton and Fairfield Bay is going to get, they're going to get a lot more. But I think it would be doing the cut your nose off to spite your face to say, well, I'll take 43 less so that Clinton and Fairfield Bay don't get more. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, something up. Fairfield Bay has its own library. We're going to be voting on this. What if all my people in Fairfield Bay say, hey, we got a library over here. We, we don't want to pay for that library over there. This is a county thing, folks. It's for everyone. When the tide comes up, all boats float. Okay? Okay? Okay, Nikki, back up again. Back up on just okay. what you said. I, I, okay. And it's, it, okay, it's, back, okay. Tell me your figures and how you came up. Okay. They're going to be $43,000 less than if we went with this. I have to say that these figures are based on 12 years because I was not prepared and I thought that's what I wanted and so that's what I figured it on. Okay? And so I'll You're just talk about Act 833. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm just going to pass this around and this is the percentages per Act 833 as I understand it. And this is an ordinance by the Quorum Court that was passed in 16. Um, that was these numbers. So I didn't come up with 15% in these numbers. There's an intergovernment council made up of the the mayor, the mayors, and the judge. Okay, and they set these numbers. So as far as these numbers, I think they're subject to change. So that's a whole other discussion, but not for tonight. So in doing it. And again, I was basing it on other things. So I want to, it's been complicated by the 16 years. So if we took, I want to walk it through. And again, if I'm wrong on what I just said, but I wasn't wrong on my other calculations. So let me just make sure that I'm, me and Bro, oh, I've discussed many things today. So I don't okay. want to. So while you're making your calculations, yes. let's go ahead and entertain some people whose hands raised. And I saw a bunch raised, and I'm going to take them in the order I saw the hands go up. <laughs> So first will be Jerry Pico. <coughs> I'm Jerry Pico. I'm the fire chief for Burnridge Fire Department. I, I want to address uh, Ms. Phillips' comments. Uh, we did get grants. Uh, first grant I got was about 2006, 2007. That was my first engine. Uh, then it took years to get another grant for a tanker. About two years ago, we got a brush truck. That was a hundred and forty some thousand dollar brush truck. Okay, so I get a tanker is three hundred thousand, an engine was two something. Uh, the bad thing is I can't afford the insurance. You get a new truck, you know what the insurance is on a three hundred thousand dollar truck? So yeah, go get grants. Good luck paying for the insurance on the truck. I can't do it. So I got to cut somewhere else. Okay, I did the calculations recently because there's an article came out, a bunch of firefighters were hurt, some were killed, tire blew on their truck, truck rolled over, killed a bunch of people. We're supposed to have tires changed every seven years. It would cost me on my twenty two to thousand dollar annual budget, that's what my fire department's budget's about twenty two thousand. It would be over a quarter of my budget to change the tires I need to change. I can't afford to change tires. So some of us have been told well, yeah, your tires are bad. My, I got tires 30 plus years old on my trucks. So I put a firefighter behind the wheel, send him to a fire at 2 in the morning. He blows a tire. What happens? We're responsible for that. Okay? So what we're told is we'll sl drive slower. Okay, well, when we come to your house to a fire, we're slowing down because we got old tires. So I can't afford tires. 7,000. Seven to ten thousand dollars is what it would cost me in tires. That's a lot of money, just tires. And then already you've heard about turnouts, air packs. I got air packs, I'm running air packs that are about 1980 vintage. I've been putting in grants for air packs, and I'm good at grants. I've got a bunch of stuff with grants. Probably more than anybody in the county. I've been putting air pack grants in for six years. And I got I put a grant in. Not for just me, but for uh, Shirley and Highway 110. It's a called a, 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 a grant that, that, that is not just for you. It's a community grant. So 
So we got them involved. Didn't get it. Put it in again. Didn't get it. We still haven't got it. You know, we, we get turned down letters, but that's part of grant writing, and that's what we do. Um, but we can't do it. You know, Fairfield Bay, thank you, gave us some of their old air packs because they got new ones. That was used when they got them. They were used when they got them, old air packs, but hey, we got them. They're newer than what we got. Well, now that hurts. I've needed them, but that hurts my chance of getting a grant for air packs because now I've got some newer ones. So I'm not going to get a grant for air packs for us or 110 or Shirley or you know whoever else we we're working with. So, you know, it, it goes again, you know, the, the percentage. It costs us a ton of money to operate. Uh, you know, we're already not getting the same percent on Act 33. I wish we were, but we don't. Uh, I, I really think we need to get the same percentage um, on this tax. It just, you know, you know we have costs. Um, we inherited, um, you're from Mike's from High, uh, Holly Mountain, we inherited the Holly Mountain Fire Department. They had to close, they didn't have enough people. It's like, great, now I got two, three more trucks that I can't afford, because I only inherited about 25 homes, three more trucks. And that's the oldest one's a 1982, I think, the engine. That's got old tires. I think that might even have the original tires. Um, and it needs to be replaced. I can't afford to replace their truck. It's my truck now. I'm responsible for it. So, I don't know. We, we are parking our trucks in somebody's shed because we can't afford to build a building up there. I got two trucks parked in my garage at home because I can't, I don't know where else to put them. I don't want to sell them because I'm hoping someday We'll build the station, and someday I won't have to go buy another truck because I got some in, in my garage. But that's how we operate. Your comments so, are intriguing, but we must call upon Here we go. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, next, the next hand I saw raised was the gentleman in the black t shirt standing up. You'll have to forgive me, public speaker, so I'm going to stumble through this quite a bit. My name is Adam Milton. I'm with the Alt Red Fire Department. I've been on there for two years now. I'm also an emergency responder, and me and my wife just took the course to become chaplains for the county. Um, the EMS course I took, that money came out of my pocket. My jump back came out of my pocket. My supplies came out of my pocket came out of my wife's pocket. The majority of us out here in these counties, we're paying for our own stuff, our own supplies coming out of our pockets because we want to help. We want to do the right thing by our county, by our communities, and help our fellow man. I'm willing to pay that price, but I, I'm a custodian. You know, I've got three kids at home. It hurts, but I'm trying to do the right thing. Now, as far as the grants and that, we have a long list of an all red of people that just don't want to pay their fire dues because we're dope heads. You know, we can't be trusted. This stuff's been thrown around over and over again, and it's ridiculous to me. We can't afford a grant writer because nobody wants to pay their fire dues. And now I'm hearing that they need it more than we do. It makes no sense to me. It really doesn't. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for your time. The next hand I saw go up was Chad Brown. Thank you. I, I just want to talk about the municipality's perspective a little bit. Like most of you know, I sat in the in that corner for several years with you guys, and I, and I, I walked through those shadows of all those bad budget years and of, of the tough decisions you've had. I've also sat at all those city council meetings that the city of Clinton has had to go through to try to deal with how they're going to pay for those things. The reality is when Joe Taxpayer walks into the, the Sitco down here south of town and buys a soda for a dollar, they pay a dollar and nine cents, and they don't really care if it's it. When they go... 30 minutes south of town, they stop at the Greenbrier sit-go and they buy, they buy Mountain Dew for a dollar. They pay a dollar a night and they don't care who gets it. 
my point is, it's a finite resource that sales tax is, okay? There are a lot of things about this sales tax that I like. A lot of things about I like paying off the library, big library supporter. I like I like the idea that there's a public there's there's a funds for, for this corn court to spend on needed public safety issues in, in, in the county. I like that because I've known for a long time that revenue is needed in the county. I like the idea that there's support for for fire departments because I know they need. I know everybody here works hard. They're all volunteers, and I, I know that. My point though is that the issues that exist there exist in the city of Clinton just as much. And the fact is that there are more people here. We are doing our business. We are all here sitting in the city of Clinton doing our business. The county spent about $3 million renovating this building. It's probably valued at about $5 million. I could throw a rock and hit the Western Symphony. It's probably valued at about $3 million. I could drive a half mile down the road and get to the Walmart that's valued at several million dollars. That's where the people do their business. Fairfield Bay is also a growing community and it's being squeezed because it's because of the same issues. <coughs> the sales tax is a finite resource. The reality is, is that we're set at two cents. A lot of people have known this was sunsetting for a long time and a lot of people have dreamed about how they're gonna what they're gonna do with that. And you've got an opportunity to think about what you're gonna do with that money. The people of the city of Clinton have had the same ideas. And by evenly distributing this money, your, your impact on the people of Clinton. And the simple fact is, it kind of tells me that my life is worth less than someone who lives in an unincorporated area if you're sending more money per person, which is it's going to be a fact. You're going to send more money per person out in the unincorporated areas than the people who are incorporated. When I built my house, I chose to build it in the city limits. I had property in the city, I had property out of the county. I chose to build it in the city limits. I chose to build it where I put it because right across the street there's a, there's a fire hydrant. I knew, where, I knew what my fire rating was going to be when I built my house. Where people live is a choice, okay? And we don't need to disincentive people, disincentivize people from living in communities in smaller areas where it's more efficient. It's just, it's just a fact. There's still a lot of money that can be available if you divide it up according to population or according to Act 833 funding. There's still a lot of money for everyone <coughs> here to get something. There's also the availability for me and my children to get the same sort of protection. Because the city of Clinton has the same problems. I'll also point out the fundamental difference in the structure of the way funding is set up and, and the way taxing and payments can be done for volunteer fire departments versus municipalities. Municipalities cannot put a voluntary tax on property taxes. Versus like Talk Talk can, like Fault Ever can, like all these other people can. By putting the voluntary tax on the tax statements, many of the volunteer fire departments are, are seeing compliance up to like 90%, or at least well over half. That's not an option for the people in the city plan. The city fire department tried to, or for many years, collected a, a, a tax or a fee on water, water rates, and they couldn't do that because it was an illegal exaction. That's the way it is. Two years ago, the city asked the city of Clinton or the, the people, the voters in Clinton, to raise their sales tax for fire services. It didn't pass. One of the primary reasons it didn't pass was because the sales tax rate was already pretty high. And that, that's, that's just the reality. Again, I, I believe the sales tax is a finite resource. I don't think we can just continue to ask more and more. I like, I like what you're doing with this, with this money. I want the county to get this tax. I think you're going to have a problem passing it if the people, the, the people in the municipalities are not given a, a greater share. And Justice Holt, if one person called you, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, Justice Brown received about 300 calls from people from all sides of the city. Because no, nobody knows, nobody knows who, who their JP is. I guess is. they don't like me. And I don't know. I don't know. But I, I can tell you. I can tell you right now. You can ask Sam and Gracie. But they, they know Mom was on the phone for the last three days nonstop. And it's consistently been not just I can't support it, but that I will campaign against it if it's not Act 33, Act 833 funding. I've been through this thing before because I tried to get one past the city and people campaigned against it. Lost. I don't want to see you guys lose. I want to support your tax. It's hard for me. It's hard for me to give a full throat of support when the money's not being given to the people in the proportion where they live. Sorry. Uh, the next hand I saw raised was, and, and there was a gentleman that I can't see who's back there, but they were in front of Chad and just one or two beside him. Was there someone there? Okay. Uh, and the ne next one would be Mike Banks. And I want to say, to be fair, it's to clarify before they talk, okay? 
uh, when I talked with Brian, we had a lot of thought processes and a lot of ideas floated. So I even thought about a different percentage proportion. So I want to be very clear to clarify what I said. Um, it's, it, it is less. It's not a lot less, but I want to clarify that. So in this scenario, with the 16 years and all the, the facts that have been laid out, if it is distributed evenly, every, all, um, is it 18? My head has been 17. Okay, okay, okay. So by my numbers, and I could be off because I go between 17 and 18, but evenly it's around 888,000, okay, if we all get the same. And it looks to me if um, it's divided by this government local agreement thing that everyone would be looking at seven. Fairfield Bay and Clinton get there. Clinton's 15, Fairfield Bay's 12, all the other ones are 4.5, which equates to about roughly 725,000. So it is a difference. If it's divided equally, everybody gets approximately, and these are numbers on paper with no calculator, 888,000. If we go by Act 833, then the the ones in the county get 725,000. So I want to clarify that because I said that it was more, I, and I want to clarify that. Okay. Thank you. What's You're the difference? Uh, roughly a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Again, I would like to have 20 minutes to really get the calculations right before we voted on anything or anything like that. So I'm sorry, I just wanted to clarify and not okay. give this Again, I'm Mike Banks, and, and I'm going to speak as, as the president of the Fire Chiefs Association. I'm going to speak to all the JPs. When this was discussed and brought up at the Fire Chiefs Association meeting, it was, it was determined that the best way to do this was equally across the board. I understand Clinton and I understand Fairfield Bay. I also understand your fire ratings versus our fire ratings. Our fire ratings up until this year have been a class 9. That's as low as, well, there's a class 10, which means you don't have any fire service at all. And so, by divided and evenly, it gives each one of us, of the departments, the funding so that we can do the things that we need to do. We're not funded as the cities are. The cities provide funds for the fire departments. We're not. We either do subscriptions and Act 833 funds. That's the money that we get to operate on. And so when you get into the rural departments, we're operating on a shoestring compared to the cities. And so I'm asking the JPs that represent the rural community to, to, to please vote no and have it divided evenly between all the fire departments. And I find that you, you'll find that all the fire chiefs agree on that particular item. Uh, I know that the cities don't, but but and if I was in your place, I'd probably be the same way. So I'm just, I I, I'm just going that. to be honest about yeah. that, you know. Because but, I'm not. Yeah, I appreciate. But, but I, I am looking at the overall picture. Most of our, <coughs> most of your departments are fives or below, other than the cities. I don't know. Choctaw. What is Choctaw? Five. Five. So, so, so I'm asking you know when when it comes to a vote. I, I'm asking you to do it evenly across the board. Does that include the municipalities, their fire chiefs as well, if they're in a grant? Because they're not here, I'm not going to speak okay. on their behalf, to I be honest with you. And, and the reason I'm saying that is because they may have changed their yeah, minds since absolutely. then. But in the original phase of it, everybody was in a grant. But I, I can only say that the people that were in with the quorum that was there on that evening. <coughs> Just like you guys have a quorum. If you don't have a quorum, you can't hold a meeting, right. conduct business. Same thing we do. Okay. And so uh, at that time, so I, I can't, <coughs> I'm not going to misrepresent them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to uh, ask Gordon Wilbur a question. <coughs> Gordon, I'd like to know your perspective on uh, the the uh, redistribution that's being that's being uh, proposed, that's being discussed, 
and how would that affect the timeline of the ballot? Well, first of all, I have a question. Does, does the rescue squad get Act 833 money? No. 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 So you have to do something right. different and, there. Yes, and I, I think that that could be in an ordinance by the point of order, right. in my opinion, but yes. The, you would have to amend Section 9 of the ordinance to change where it says equal to something. That's where the amendment would be. I'm, I'm sorry, I was speaking oh, so this Section 9 has the word equal in it one place. That would have to change, you know, to be right. determined by the quorum court from would, time to time annually. Would that be doable? Yeah, I think it, I, that's the only place that okay. appears. It's, it's okay. not in the ballot uh, itself. Okay, excellent. Thank you. There was a bill passed by the state legislature that set a time frame for the fire departments to go down to at least a minimum of a six. And that time frame, I forgot the year. 2024. Mm -hmm. 2024. January 1st, 2024. And that was one of the things why we started working, trying to get that. <coughs> incidentally, a big portion of Choctaw is in your district. <laughs> and I didn't call it. <laughs> but if you want me to, I'll bring it up myself. <laughs> Eight thirty three breakdown is very unfair. We're always talking about being fair here. We're not being fair. Give it fifteen percent. Where did these, where did these figures come from? All. And Nick, as far as the intergovernmental council, that come up five years ago. It was dropped because Fairfield Bay was in debt for their engines. They left it alone. It, it cost just as much as the mass as Burt Ridge. Already worth about trust the equipment that doesn't have clean. Um, the next hand I saw go up was uh, all red, or, or chimes, oh. my bad. West side of the county, huh? the northwest side of the county. Yeah. I want to address the mutual aid. When all hell breaks loose, when there's a tornado, when there's a bridge accident, chimes is here in Clinton. We get called. We haul two patients off the bridge with our ambulance. When the tornadoes hit, I work weeks and weeks and weeks down here at the shelter. All of our firefighters showed up down here and volunteered. It is a mutual aid. We all help each other. And it cost us to be here. It cost chimes. We have to run those trucks. We have to do that. For Clinton to survive on its own, it can't do it. It needs the help. When Marshall Square caught fire, 16 departments showed up. That saved the square. Clinton can't exist without us. That's it. Thank you. Now I'm going to have to ask for another show of hands because I lost track of it. <laughs> I just want to make a real quick address to the gentleman that came up and said that we have a $3 million building here, a $1 million building across the street. I live up on Quantum Road. My farm estimated out $1 million. I have four other farms down my road that are well up into uh, the woods down there. That house that's down there, I don't know what that place is worth. That's Mr. Uh, Joe Lee's daughter's house. That's probably $2 million. <coughs> These farms that are out in the rural area, they're million dollar houses, they're <coughs> million dollar farms. We need the equipment to go fight them fires. That's what we need. Thank you. Mayor McCormick, did you wish to speak? Uh, yeah, I'll, well, uh, I'll stand up and can't hear. Uh, no, I would just say, everybody's got a good point. What's the goal and where are we headed on the 833 distribution? Obviously, I, I'd be in favor of that. And I know Brian said, I've got to take care of these fire departments. What, decide what your overall goal is. And Chad's point is, being from the municipalities, will agree that it's a finite amount. You're, you know, I was concerned about 30 years. Boom. That concerned me and the distribution concerned me because we tried to pass our own, failed. Uh, you can argue, I don't 
I'm not going to tell anybody how to write a grant or what you should. I don't know. You know, everybody just wants the same thing. But uh, you just have to decide what you think is going to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, what's going to pass? Do we need you know take care of the library, hospital? All people say I'm off the hospital. I think you'll always need that money for the hospital because where it's built, you're always going to have upkeep. School, hospital, big employers, people come into town, they look at that. Got to be able to protect it. Not against, I know all these, most all these people, these rural fire departments. That's where I stand, Richard McCormick. I ain't speaking for the city council, uh, but that's where I stand. Uh, that's all I've got to say. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Had a hand up. Judge, yes. I just got something to say real quick. And it don't, well, it does amount to a lot. About, you know, we have a lot of different ideas here. I just want the people to understand that we can sit here and we can argue and we can fight and we can carry on, okay? But when it cuts, when it comes down to the the deal, all these fire departments are going to stick together. It don't matter where we're from. If Fairfield Bay calls me and says, Brian, I need you guys and I need you now, guess what? I'm getting up and leaving. Exactly. Okay? That's who the firefighters are in your county. Every single one of them will drop everything they're doing and come running. No matter who they are or what city or what municipality or where they're at in the county. That's who your firefighters are in this county. Just go Amen. Amen. And I want to say this, and I, I told Brian this. These numbers, I told Brian, I am not a firefighter and I know nothing about it. And from who they came from, the, the council, and then it was approved by the quorum court, I, um, those to me were people that were in the know, okay? And so I just want to make clear that these numbers, I didn't make them up, and I didn't, I don't know if, and Brian, if they are fair or not. But it is what is currently in place. And so I don't act that I know what a fire, if those are fair or not. That's what well, I'm going to say. It's going to stay like it is, Nikki. I mean, it, it's safe. Right. And I still, I still stand by the, the municipalities because of the concentration of people need more. I'm not backing off that. I'm just saying that these numbers, I didn't come up with this formula. It's my. I don't know where it came from. Okay. Um, the next hand that I saw raised was Kim Brown. Just to address Act 833. Act 833 in many counties is divided equally. It is established by this intergovernmental council, which is the judge and the mayors from the four municipalities. We tried to get this changed to make it equal some time ago. Damascus and Shirley voted to make it equal. Clinton and uh, Fairfield Bay voted the other way. And the then county judge sided with them and that's the way it's been. But it can be set by that intergovernmental council. The state doesn't have any control over it. However, I think something that Ms. Brown over here brought up, there is a proposal that Act 833 will either go away or will be, di be directed from the state level to be divided equally. It, it's at that point right now. <coughs> um, at, at this point, and, and we have a lot of hands flying up and a lot of people to, that want to speak, but um, Ms. Cruz makes a very valid point. Uh, we, we're in open discussion and there has been no amendment proposed. So uh, would someone like to propose and second that amendment because we don't even know if we're talking in terms. <laughs> if, if this is going to even break, okay. be brought to the floor. Well, can I just ask, as as talking to get this worked out, is would anybody? I'll propose the amendment, but if I don't have to amend it, if if 
if it's not going to work out. So if you can just tell me your feelings, we don't have to go through the amendment process. I had to, you know, represent my people, and that's how I feel. But can you kind of tell me what you think? Keep and if you keep would go it equal, keep it fair, keep it fair, equal. What's that? Do we need to vote on this before we do it? It would be better if we would just do a roll call vote. If someone would want to motion it and second it, and we'll just uh, we'll just do a roll call vote. I make a motion. We leave it like it is. Make it equal. <laughs> it already is, so that's not a motion. Okay. <laughs> then I move that we go by Act 833. I second. Okay. The motion has been made and second to amend this ordinance to redistribute the funding uh, as specified on this ordinance. Uh, to reflect those percentages currently established by Act 833. Uh, roll call vote. Oh, yes. That means that it's zero, so you got to. That means what? Rescue squad is zero in that Okay. Okay. I don't want that. I don't want that. Let me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want that. So I do not want to do something that would do that. Okay. So, um, is there a way to include that? Yeah, I don't want to try to propose an amendment. I just. Oh, okay. I take that into account somehow and just amend it again after we do after this vote. Because we have we have a motion and a second on the floor. <coughs> Did we get a second? Yes. We have it. Right. I second. We have a motion and second on the floor, so I'm going to call the vote. But we could amend it. You can go back with another. Roll call vote. No. Nikki. No. Sarah. No. Can you clarify? Yes or no. No, it's no, we're not going to do it. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> let's be clear about that. <laughs> this amendment, though, this amendment would cut out, we would need to amend it another way, and this would cut out the fire squad, and that's not what I am. No, 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 we are voting on whether or not to entertain the motion of distributing the funds by Act 833. This distribution does not include the rescue squad. No. Phillips? I would do it if it included the, the rescue squad. But we can, yeah, but we could if we could amend it. Okay. So you vote no right now? No, I vote well, yes. No. <laughs> Bradford? No. Tatum? No. Lemmings? No. Bass? No. Okay. Motion fails. We're back to open discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Rescue. Chad. I think the idea of the thing would be just to simply say, Act 833 percentage is what you're using as a guideline, but ultimately it'll be the quorum court that decides. So the idea would be to ask you, instead of just saying in the ballot that will be voted on, that will be locked in for 16 years, it'll be an even distribution, simply put that the distribution would be subject to the quorum court's approval, or as determined, the distribution as determined by the quorum court. So when you get your tax money, you pass the tax, you say everybody gets what whatever money they want to get. And you can do it quarterly, annually, every 10 years, whatever. So you're saying that we decide, or they decide. The quorum court decides. Just as Act 833, the formula was determined, it was, it was passed by resolution of the quorum court in 2016, and there was a, form, there was a percentage that laid out right there. What I'm suggesting is that the ordinance would say, because the ordinance would say distributed as determined by the quorum court. So we we could redo these numbers. You could change that, and if everybody wants to vote against Clinton, that's all their their power to do that. So as at distributed distribution as determined by the quorum court. I like that. Versus locked in equal distribution yeah. for every single person. And, and, and I'll just add one thing that's going to help is if 10 years down the road, one fire department is sitting on a whole lot of money that they that is, that you guys determine is not needed and it's a windfall for them, 
you can you can choose to change the distribution at that point. Because I'll tell you right now, you guys got a lot of regulation coming up for the next 16 years. Get ready. Uh -huh. yeah. you, you've got a million dollar program coming up, so you're going to be you're going to be talking about this. You're going to be getting fire calls for a long time. So you're going to want to think about how you can change this if you're like, oh my gosh, doing an even distribution was a mistake because X fire department is sitting on a lot of money and Y fire department can't can't stop a fire when the restaurant catches fire. So. That'd be my idea. I guess I would have a question <laughs> for for the financier, for a financier. How how secure is a loan against a a floating tax without an amount to borrow against a specific amount? <laughs> So. I'll shut up and let y'all talk. I'll just say that there have been some of my voters that have said that they they want what they want to vote on is a, a set in stone thing. They don't want people to be able to change it. The corn court to be able to change it. I, I mean that was straight out of the mouths of at least three people. They want it, if they're going to vote, they want it to be what they're voting on at that time, and it not be able to be changed. But the 50 wouldn't be able to be changed. The distribution of the 50. So the 50 would still have to go to the fire departments. There would be no rigging with that. The distribution between the different ones would be at the quorum court's discretion. So mm -hmm. that, that would be true. But, that would be, but the 50% would have to stay with the volunteer fire department. Right. But we would have to get together for the percentages. And right now, I mean, there's no numbers in the proposal as far as loan amounts. I mean, it's just evenly distributed. I mean, it's not like there's loan amounts in there. I mean, I'm just saying. Okay. 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 Um, just to, uh, to expedite this evening, because we can discuss this forever, uh, is there a, a new amendment, one that we can talk about specifically and focus on? Does anyone want to bring to the table an amendment to the ordinance. I, I would have an amendment to change the uh, the percentage, just change the percentage to something that we would work with. Well, I would make an. Go ahead. Okay. You might have better than me. No, but based on what Gordon had said, mm -hmm. if we, we it could be amended to per at per approval annually by the quorum board. Annually. Instead of even layer. Okay. Annually. As approved by the Corn Court Annual. No, so we, we have we have a motion made. Yeah, just the exact wording where it says equal in section nine. It's instead of saying equal portion, it would say in such portion equal as determined annually by the Okay. So we have a motion on the floor to amend the the, the ordinance to say in such portions as to be determined annually by the Corn Court. Do I hear a second? I do. Okay, it's been motioned and second for this amendment. Open discussion for this amendment. The okay. only problem I could I could really think with that is is if if a fire department was going to buy something, then they'd have to have a, a how much we're going to get next year. Yep. You know that that might be a problem. Yeah. What, we're going to have what kind of audit system we're going to set up here with this. I mean, it would have to be something to determine how much these fire departments need, one or the other. Well, could, could we could we have this with, um, do we have to have it set right now? It just says set by the forum court. Maybe we ask them how much, uh, how much they need. And then we, well, that would open up the How can you determine that be? Yeah. 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 17. Yeah. Instead of yeah. working together, yeah. they'll be fighting with yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. We, 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 have, yeah. we have a motion and second yeah. on the floor uh, that everything needs to be specific to the amendment. Okay. okay. So, I, I do see a lot of hands, and I've seen a lot of them that have been raised for a while. We're going to have to expedite this process, and I'm going to try to do so in, a, in, a, in a, as efficient a manner as possible. Uh, it's up to the court. The court, court, you you have the first, you have the first right of, uh, to speak. So, 
I'm you. just going to say this. We are a county, and we, w we need to want what's best for our county. We need to quit splitting it up by city and this person and that person because with the mutual aid, and I myself have been the one and only person on a fire call, and our truck wouldn't start unless you stand on one leg and hold your mouth a certain way. <laughs> and I had to call Fairfield Bay and Burnt Ridge, and they were there immediately. So we need to focus on being a county and doing what's best for our county rather than saying me, me, me. I just feel like we're okay. losing sight of what's important. Okay, so if, if Kim says these figures here are going away statewide. Potentially, but the potentially. money could be going away. Yeah, and the money could be going away. You know, we're, we're going to have to manage that, and I do mean manage that, as best we can, equally, <coughs> because they all deserve it. So we have a motion and a second on the floor on the amendment. Are there any? Is there any more discussion by the quorum court? Uh, the amendment is to the amendment is to, to annually to, by the to be determined by annually court. by the quorum court. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Brief, brief, brief <laughs> discussion, brief comments from the floor. Yes. The question I have is, with this 833 going away, and you're looking at a 16-year timetable of taxes, you could spread this money equally along 17 departments. Everybody should take a fire engine everywhere. I'm not against the fire department or anything. I just stand up for what I believe in. Everybody knows this. You, you distribute all this money equally because it becomes an insurance policy because in four years you have no guarantee for any of these people behind me or in this room. We all pay taxes. They all come help. Or at least I hope they do. For me, on my part. <laughs> but the thing is, it would guarantee them money to build a building, fix a truck, maintain, buy tires, insurance. There's a lot of operational costs in a big truck. I work on them all day long, every day at my job. $300,000 half million dollar trucks. There's a lot of maintenance and they're more complex than a fire truck, what I work on. Okay. They need the money and give them the insurance policy. Set the money aside, you guys control the purse strings. If you split it up if by an annual budget to every district, it's going to become a war on who needs what. You don't need that. Put the money in the bank Equally distributed to all the fire departments so everybody can buy trucks, buy tires, build buildings, and then when there's a problem, everybody's got batteries that are hot in the truck to get there. Got the equipment to put on to, to keep them alive. Thank you. Yes. Oh, you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to come up here. My name is Alvin Stevenson. I'm the assistant fire chief of the Damascus Fire Department, volunteer on the Fire Department. I'm also a constable down in the Damascus Barnett Township. My question is, is how can you take a department that's already striving to get by that's Act 833 qualified with what they have and say, well, we're not going to give you the funding next year because, well, you couldn't make it with this fire. So we're going to take your funding and we're going to give it to Clinton or Fairfield Bay or somebody else. Mm -hmm. And we're a municipality fire department. We take trucks to All Red, we take trucks to Faulkner County and even Conway County to assist when they call and need us. They call, we're there. So how can you deprive us of that? When we're meeting Act 833 standards, but because we feel somebody else is more deserving, we're going to control what's funded out to these other departments. Okay. Uh, raise your hands again because I've lost track. You've had yours raised for quite some time. Thank you, Judge. My name is Dale Rath. I'm the president of the board of Albright Fire Department. I'm a taxpayer and I'm a voter. What you guys are talking about saying, I ain't got no problem, everybody needs the money. But when you're saying larger cities, I get it, there's more people there. But you're putting a dollar amount saying the people in the city are more important than the people in the county. There are homes in the county, there are lives in the county. You need to think about that. You can't put a dollar on somebody's life. My life, my family's life, my kid's life, my neighbor's life is just as important as you people that live in the city. I agree with that 100%. Thank you. 100%. So it's my house. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I agree. Okay. There, uh, okay. Back in the corner, standing up. Did you still have a comment? 
Okay. Did you have a comment? You're talking about giving the foreign court jurisdiction over the funds. <coughs> so they're no longer equally distributed. But any time that, that, that they want to change that, it be brought to, to the ballot, to the people, and be re-looked at. There's nothing stopping going back to the people to be voted on. Okay. I'm not for the foreign court dictating every year because if I'm going to go for a loan for a fire truck, I want to know that the funds are available that are coming in. I don't want to know that there's a possibility now that I end up like the library with $300,000 sitting out there and I have no way to pay it. Okay. It was taken. Thank you. We're going to take one more comment and then we're going to call the question. Yes, sir. Okay. My name is Frank Dingley. I was a volunteer for Grace for quite a while. Is it working good now? What we are doing now for the fire department? If it is, why change it? <coughs> Any comment? Is it working good? No. No. Money. No. 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 Okay. What? No. Well, we don't have. How can we change it? I mean, if there's no money, there's no money. But what we're doing now isn't good. I don't know. That's you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's been it's been motioned at second. To, to amend this ordinance to give the corn court the authority to uh, uh, evaluate this and do, uh, annually and distribute. Uh, roll oh, call vote. And, and, oh. and wipe out annually. Because I, I, I agree, you cannot plan ahead. Mm -hmm. You just can't plan ahead to buy anything if you don't know how much That's a good pay. point, but it's already motioned and seconded. Okay. So we're going to have to vote on the, the, the motion and second. So, <laughs> okay. roll call vote on the amendment. Alt? Nope. Nikki? Yes. Sarah? No. Phillips? Smile, man. Uh, <laughs> yes. Lynn? No. Bradford? No. Item? No. Lemming? <laughs> <laughs> no. Bass? No. Okay. Okay. Now we're back to open discussion. Uh, what would be the best way to, to expedite this whole process? All right, here's how we're going to do this. Here's how we're going to do this. We can make this go. We can make this go for hours on end. Uh, I believe that we've had uh, public, we've had a lot of public speak more than once. So everyone has had ample opportunity to raise their hands and be acknowledged. So uh, at this point, I'm going to exercise the uh, the the right to uh, 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 disable public comments. The comments are going to stay within the quorum court, and it's going to be for the quorum court to decide. Do I hear another amendment, or are we ready to vote on this ordinance? I'd like to change that amendment to leave out annually. Okay. Change, change it annually. That we set a new amount that would be different than this amount. Not quite even, but a lot better than this. We're going to have to be much more specific than that. We're going to ballot. I think it's, it's not going to pass. Okay, you can amend it all you want to, but that's not going to work. I mean, we're not going to. You're not going to get support for that in this group. Right. I, I, I see. I mean, yeah. Well, not even just in this group, but think about all of the people in this room. I mean, well, right. No, I agree. I mean, I feel like I represented so, what yes. my people wanted, and so I, happen. you know, I, we're all in this together. Yes. Okay, yes. I'm yes. not. Mm -hmm. Did a great job. Okay. So, what I'm hearing is no additional amendment, and I believe we are ready to vote on this ordinance as presented. Uh, the uh, only. Uh, amendment that has been made and had stuck so far was to reduce the term from 2051 to 2036. So now, with that amendment made to the ordinance, uh, I will entertain a motion to approve this ordinance. Oh, One thing, Dave. Or adopt this ordinance. What about uh, do I have a motion to adopt? Uh, okay, we have a motion to adopt. Do we have a second? We have a motion and second. Now we're at discussion. 
We want to adopt it. We had to address the jail. No. Question, question four. Is the one quarter going into jail? Is that the way it is? Is the way it is? Uh, one quarter into the, the, the jail operation, the maintenance, and one half in the fire and rescue, and then one. The, the quarter of a percent can be distributed by the quorum court for 911, for uh, jail, for sheriff, for office of emergency management, for emergency services. Exactly. And, and that is, it was left uh, intentionally to be controlled by the quorum court, that one quarter only. Is that quarter, is that going to be enough to... To address our pressing issue with the jail right now, being overcrowded, overfull. It's not going to fix it, but it'll help. Uh, it ain't going to be enough, though, right? There's never going to be enough. Crime ain't going to ever go back. We're we're bringing up a separate issue. Yes, sir. Yeah. Dale, I don't know if you were going to get this. I mean, at some point you need to probably suspend the rules in the second, third readings uh, instead of just voting more than three at yes. once. Okay. This has an emergency clause on it, so we technically wouldn't have to okay. do it but one time. Wouldn't you vote the emergency clause in separate? You bet. You bet. Okay. So do I do that? I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm, my par I'm asking my parliamentarian how we... Okay. 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 Okay, so we have a motion and a second on the floor, and uh, we, we're uh, we're closing discussion, and uh, we'll vote on the emergency clause after this. It should it pass. Uh, we'll make it. We'll make it contingent on the emergency the emergency clause. Okay. Roll call vote for the ordinance. Holt. Yes. Nikki. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Phillips. No. Lynn? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Tatum? Yes. Lemmings? Yes. Yes. Okay. Passes now. I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the emergency clause. So be it. Second. Okay. It's been motion and second to approve the emergency clause on the ordinance. Uh, any discussion? <coughs> Roll call vote. Correct. Holt? Yes. Nikki? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Phillips? No. Lynn? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Tatum? Yes. Lemmings? Yes. Fast. Yes. Uh, who, who, yeah. Bill. Holt first. Who second that? Uh, Lynn. 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 Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now we have other new business. <laughs> <laughs> we have an appropriation ordinance to be read by Justice Brown. I'm going to be honest, I've got something to do with you. I'm never going to find it. Can I have it? Okay. Okay. Am I going right now? This ordinance is 2019-59. Be it enacted by the Quorum Court of the County of Van Buren, the State of Arkansas, an appropriation ordinance to be entitled. An appropriation ordinance to amend the original appropriation ordinance number two. We still have business going on. Uh, if you, feel free to exit, but please do so as quietly as possible. To amend the original appropriation ordinance number 2018-59, the annual operating budget for 2019 to increase the projected revenue of the 911 fund and appropriate $2,329.36 from county general maintenance budget number 1000-123. Whereas other services and charges group is in the red in the 911 budget and whereas the December bill of $2,545.15 for AT&T will need to be paid before the due date. Now therefore be it ordained by the Corn Court of Van Buren County, Arkansas that section number one, $2,545.15 be transferred and appropriated to the 911 budget number 3020-501-3071 rent, machinery and equipment from the County General Maintenance Budget number 1000-123-2022 plumbing and electrical. I move we adopt this. Second. It's been motion and second to adopt this civil uh, ordinance. Any discussion? Uh, Roll call vote. Holt? Yep. Nikki? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Tatum? Yes. Lemmings? Yes. Fast? Yes. 2019-60. 2019-60. At this time, I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules for the purpose of, of dispensing with the audible reading of the transfers. Don't move. Second. 
<laughs> okay, it's uh, Mary, Mary first, uh, Sarah second. Okay, roll call vote for suspension. Paul, yes. Yes. Sarah? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Lemmings? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, do I, 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 I'll entertain a motion to approve the transfers. So be it. Second. 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 Second that we uh, approve these transfers. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. They carry. Uh, that concludes the, the business of this meeting. Thank you everyone. We, we had a very productive meeting. Uh, I, I'm very proud of the way our communities come together. I think no matter what happened here this evening, we're all going to come together and we're going to march forward as one. And I think that's an exciting time for our community. Uh,